first ideas for this video clip actually started around May 2006. Uh, it had been a few years since we made our first video clip, which was Moonlit Haze. And uh, our new song, Land of Scars, was uh, chosen rather quickly. Land of Scars was written with the idea that bad experiences in life uh, can leave scars in your mind. Uh, these scars are like mountains, they get harder to cross and can form barriers for yourself. So one can easily get lost in that self-made barren land. And that's when I started with Eric to develop some kind of a storyline. Uh, I had some ideas about the visualization with regards to solitude and desolate nature, um, but after sparring with Eric, those ideas quickly turned into more detailed visions. So after some brainstorming, we set up a short list of requirements and figured out how to realize our plan. So we started with a short list of mainly a rune, a monk and a landscape. A rune isn't easy to find in Holland, especially one that looks cool. And our green fields aren't exactly suitable for what we wanted. Then we started painting some storyboards and afterwards combined some elements into a new one. Uh, basically we shared the same ideas about the desolation of the environment and the struggling of the main character. Uh, the monk character was chosen rather quickly uh, because Eric uses his monk tabard regularly on stage performances and the tabard is, is quite easy to disguise someone in because we did not want viewers to associate a specific person with the monk. Uh, and the storyline was much more important. Another decisive factor was that the monk is usually associated with the life in solitude. And this is when Peter came up with the idea to use a small model instead of a life-size ruin. So we bought a small plastic ruin. And I started painting the thing. I knew that for a realistic look, a lot of detail was needed. So painting turned out to be quite a hassle. It took me two weeks before the whole thing was finished. Yeah, then the landscape. Uh, initially, we were thinking about shooting in the dunes near the coastline, uh, but most areas are protected and there are a lot of hikers. Eric came up with the idea of doing some test shots in a small area just outside our hometown. Uh, and we knew there were some building areas with sand. So we took the car and we drove around. And then we quickly spotted a small hill of sand. And that's where we decided to film our outdoor scenes. Just outside our town, we spotted a farm field where a truck dumped a big pile of sand. It had steep and flat surfaces, so lots of variation within a few meters. Peter already figured out we could use the sky as some kind of blue screen, so the location seemed perfect to do some test shots. Once I set up the camera with a wide angle lens, suddenly the hump of sand looked huge. After shooting some scenes, we decided to do all our shooting there. The most difficult part was to avoid footsteps in areas we would be using later. Uh, like the footsteps seen in one of the last shots, where the monk has walked in circles, those footsteps are actually from a take made earlier. The weather that day was great. We needed the sky to act as blue screen, so another background could be composited in the scene. We needed the sky without any clouds that day. Luckily, we had a total clear sky and lots of wind which added more drama to the scene. Apparently the sand has been lying there for quite a while because some bird made holes in the sand which gave our artificial landscape a strange appearance. Uh, now for the choruses in the song, we wanted to have the whole band play in a ruin. Uh, and to make that possible, we had to make every band member do its performance in front of a green screen and that is a variant of the blue screen, which is commonly used in films, to composite different backgrounds and special effects against. Uh, now the location we used, it was a factory building of our former bass player, Marco Snook. And to lighten the scene, we needed a lot of power. 18,000 watts were needed to power a number of floodlights. We also needed to simulate the wind we encountered during our shooting outside. We used two common household wind blowers. 
To simulate the gusts of wind, we used the compressor and pointed the air nozzle's nozzle at each other's hair. It made an enormous amount of noise and seemed quite silly while we were filming. So after the shooting was finished, which took two days without the preparation taken into account, I started to edit the material. Uh, I shot the material on a high definition camera and I was not prepared for the resources that it would take. I needed to buy a new workstation only for the purpose of editing the raw material. And for the computer savvy amongst us, when finished the amount of sub uh, of sub clips, it took almost uh, 300 gigabytes of storage. And some scenes took like six hours to render just a few seconds of visuals. And that's pretty strong figures uh, when taken into account that the whole video only lasts for three and a half minutes. The whole editing sequence took about six months. Peter would not release many details for us to prevent spoiling the outcome. We only saw a few screenshots back then. I often spend the whole night editing a particular sequence, uh, tweaking colors until they matched other scenes. And another very time consuming part was uh, the so called rotoscoping. Uh, because in, uh, in some source material, unwanted background was in view, and that needed to be removed frame by frame. So that took uh, a lot of time. And um, another big challenge was to create convincing scenes uh, because most scenes are made of moving video material with composited static imagery and to make those static images blend into the scene a combination of color correction and fog simulation was needed. Um, and then we have also the change in weather uh, because all material was shot against the green screen um, so it had the same yellowish lighting and the change in skin tone throughout the whole video uh, was edited in later and uh, the lightning which is seen which can be seen later on in the clip also needed a lot of work because each element in a scene needed exposure adjustments with each lightning strike And after about four months, Peter came to me and said he needed a shot of the monk in which he was definitely dead. This was something we missed during our first shoot. We had scenes where the monk died, but we missed a shot in which it was clear that the transition of our beloved monk to heaven was permanently. The fun thing is that I have some cool things like swords, Lord of the Rings stuff and some bones. I even have a real skull of a monk found at the ruin of an old monastery in France. And uh, so we returned to the, to the outdoor location with the monk's rope and the skull of monk. Uh, unfortunately it rained the night before, so the lump of sand had become wet, which was visible on film. Uh, then we managed to dig up some dry sand from underneath the wet surface and we sprayed it on top of the location where we wanted the, the dead monk to be situated. And so that's when we finished shooting that last missing shot and uh, I could finish editing. Created 